Welcome to Bridging Gaps, the business podcast sharing the challenges and stories of fellow business owners. Hello and welcome back to Bridging Gaps, the business podcast. I'm Deborah Levitt, your host, and this week I'm in conversation with Janine S. Brand. Janine is the founder of Lightbox Coaching, and in this episode, we talk about her journey to qualifying as a lawyer, and then shortly after qualifying, going on a life-changing trip to Africa. As a result of that, she began to change and to look at the way that she saw things and to think about what she really wanted to do. But it wasn't until just after the birth of her first child that she started to put some of those plans into action. First of all, by taking control of what it is that she wanted from her life and standing up for that and working towards it even though it actually meant leaving the role she'd been in previously. In our conversation, we talk about the importance of mindset, imposter syndrome, the challenges of running your own business, and some of the ups and downs that Janine went through as she started her business, as well as how she works hard to try and maintain that overall balance in her life, making sure she's got time for herself, her family, and her work. So please join me now in welcoming Janine. Hi, Janine. I'm so thrilled that you're here with me today. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing really well, thank you. I am super excited to be here. So thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. I was wondering if we could start off with learning just a little bit about what it is that you do now. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's Lightbox Coaching. Yes. I help women to um, find or create work that they love beyond motherhood. So I guide them through the transition um, that happens after you become a mom and you're deciding, okay, what's next for my career? So some of them want help with navigating the transition back to work and some want help with figuring out how to start off on their own. Um, And so I help them through all of that, which is really exciting and fun. So how did you get into that? So I, um, my background is I am a lawyer. I trained and qualified as a lawyer over seven and a half years ago. Um, and shortly after qualifying, I went on a mission trip to Africa. And while I was there, we did some really impactful work. We were able to um, really support the local community through our legal training and skills. And I did that for a couple of weeks and it was a life-changing trip. Because when I came back, I felt like I wanted to be doing more to help people. So I was working as a corporate lawyer, working on big deals, um, helping people make money, but there was something missing in that. So I I kind of went on the journey of exploration. How can I help people on more of a personal level? And then I came across coaching and I realized there's this whole industry around coaching. I went to a two-day seminar um, and thought, I I am a coach. I've always been a coach. I just didn't know it was an official thing. I've always been that person to be positive and to encourage people and to say, okay, here's where you are. Here's where you want to be. What do we need to do? And so I then trained as a coach alongside my legal career. And um, it wasn't until I went on maternity leave that I kind of had space to think about, well, how do I build a business around this? And who do I really want to help with my coaching? And I decided I wanted to help women like me who had worked really hard in their careers, got to a certain level, but then started a family and thought, well, I don't necessarily want to walk away from my career, but I might have to do things a little bit differently because now I have a family that's also important to me. And so that's where where I came to um, supporting this kind of group of people through the coaching. And how do you find that? Because, you know, speaking to a lot of different people, I know there are some women who are frustrated that by by having a family, they feel that they've had to put their career on hold or that they're not able to progress maybe at the same pace of their male colleagues who haven't stepped out in the same way or who are finding that they, they don't really want to return to it. They, they do want to, you know, as you say, that the family bit's important, but the, the mental and the career piece is important as well. Um, yeah. And I, by, by the mental bit, I, I mean that that mental stimulation of not just talking about babies because, again, yeah. I have various people go at you. It's so nice to not talk about children. <laughs> So, so how do you find when you're dealing with all of these different people? Are you, are you dealing with the emotions as well as all of the, um, the decisions of where they want to go? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that I approach working with clients is twofold. So firstly, it's the mindset and it's the intention for them. And then you talk about the strategy. So for a lot of people, the first piece of work that we do together is figuring out what is it that you want to do now? 
have your values changed? What's important to you now? So for many people who are super ambitious, once they have a child, they're like, my whole world has turned upside down. What once was very important and, you know, I wanted to climb the ladder and I wanted to reach the top now seems a lot less significant because I have a human that I've birthed and that I need to keep alive. And that is now the most precious and wonderful thing ever. And so for a lot of people, it means that they have to do some work as to figure out, well, what is next? And, and what, what, would, what does it look like? And sometimes people realize that their identity is very much mixed up with who they are in their career. So I experienced that as a lawyer. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm not a lawyer, then who am I? And so for some people, that's the first time they've asked themselves those types of questions. So it is a lot of work on the mindset and on your visions and your values, and then also the confidence. So if you've taken some time out of the workplace, oftentimes people's confidence takes a knock and they think, well, I've just spent the last year learning nursery rhymes and going to play groups. Can I really serve my clients how I used to? Am I, do I still have it? Can I still do it? So there's lots and lots of different elements that come in and come to play And different people experience that whole process differently. And I think it's important to do that first. And then once you've done some kind of processing and you figure out, okay, well, I think this is the path I want to take, then I'm able to guide people and say, okay, if you're starting a business, well, these are the first steps you might want to take. If you're looking at returning to work and finding a new role, this is the kind of uh, strategy I would suggest implementing. And are you helping them to, to then take those steps as well? So you're supporting them through that entire journey? Yeah, absolutely. So I, in in terms of the strategy, so I am um, a career and executive coach, so I can help them on, you know, if you're searching for a role, how do you put yourself out there? How do you work on your personal branding and your LinkedIn profile? And then in the interview, how do you put your best self forward? That's more like in a way that's likely to impress them and show them that you're the right candidate for the role. Um, And when people decide they want to start a business, then I can put my business Um, own a hat on and say well these are the things you might want to avoid or this is how you might want to approach it so I really enjoy it because it blends kind of my love of coaching and then also the strategy side of thing and my logical brain as a lawyer so it get I'm able to put all of those pieces together and then serve people which is really fantastic isn't it because sometimes you end up in a position where you're only using one aspect of your your skill set and you're like no I've got all of these other things just trying to be used yes Um, And and the variety as well must be fantastic. Yeah, it is. So working with different people. um, When I first started out, I was focused on supporting other lawyers. And then I quickly realized that actually I've worked with some accountants and some like, like people who are in the creative industry. And I like that. I like that variety. And so my um, my mission is to help people with their careers beyond motherhood. So it is ambitious women in different industries. And it's just interesting to see kind of the different ways that they approach this next phase of their of their life and their career. And do you find that there are constants? So irrespective of whether they're creative or a lawyer or, you know, whatever it might be, do you find that there are some constants that come through from from maybe a certain type of person, you know, so irrespective of that industry, that they're having the same problems, like you mentioned about lack of confidence, that sort of thing, or, or is it just truly completely different for every person and every job yeah I think there are some differences but things that I see come up time and time again is that there's a confidence aspect and also people underplaying um, their abilities so oftentimes I'll speak to people especially if they're in a place where they're saying you know I want to kind of go in a different direction and then they 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 feel like they don't have enough skills or experience and then when I dig deeper and ask them okay tell me a bit about what you've done I find out that they've you know run these massive marketing campaigns or they've worked for companies like Burberry and and they've been to Cannes music, music and Cannes and like a music festival and London Fashion Week and they've done work on an international scale. But when we were just talking, you made it sound like you had no skills, right? So sometimes when I speak to people and then I ask them, they they re- they realize that they've forgotten about some of the things that they did because their mind is very much in one track. They're saying, okay, I'm going for this type of role, but I don't have that particular experience. And so it takes some drawing it out of them to say, actually, you might not specifically have done this, but you've done this, this, and this, and this, that is all relevant. And so I help them to join the dots and say, this is how what you've done there is now relevant for where you want to go. And, and for some of them, it's real light bulb moments. Like, oh, I never thought of that. And it's like, yes, you're amazing. You are amazing. And I just have to like tell them, listen, <laughs> you've got so much to offer and let's 
let's recognize that because if you recognize that, then you can sell it to somebody else. And I see that over and over again. And it's so easy, isn't it, to downplay, even if it's subconscious. One of my podcast clients said to me, you know, we were talking generally about what she did and trying to figure out the direction of her podcast, that sort of thing. And, and she was kind of like, so I do this, this and this. Oh, yeah. And then I do this and that. And like she'd founded or co-founded this entire organization supporting women. <laughs> And you're like, oh, that's not just an aside. That's yeah, quite a big it's, deal. It's, it's, yeah, actually, you know, I, I know that you've just kind of said, oh, Anne, but but those are pretty massive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny how we do that, though, isn't it? And that imposter absolutely. syndrome that hits you doubting, can I, you know, why would somebody want to listen to yeah. me or hire me or, you know, whatever it might be? Absolutely. Yeah. So that, those are definitely the things that come up over and over again. It's just, yeah, common across the board. So it's good to help people to work through that. And when you were making that tra transition from being a lawyer to becoming a career and executive coach, did you, did you find that you had any of those challenges yourself? Were you doubting, you know, sort of who am I to be guiding you in this direction? Or, or did you find that you, you faced other challenges as you, you made that transition? Yeah. So for me, I still work as a lawyer. So I kind of have a portfolio career because I work as a consultant lawyer still. And then I have my coaching. So I, I get to kind of fulfill my love of the law and my passion for coaching, which is brilliant. But I think moving into being a business owner and then the coaching space, initially, I felt as though I could only coach people that were like me. So like lawyers who had been through exactly the same thing. I felt like I had to experience it in order for me to help them. And then I realized that actually that's not the case. My role as a coach is not necessarily to say, this is what I've done. It's for me to help you to uncover what's important to you and how to move forward. So there had to be a bit of a mindset shift for me in terms of thinking, I can't help this person. I'm not sure if I can help them. I don't know if I can coach them well enough. Like I had those kind of, imposter syndrome type thoughts around my ability to coach and I think I got around that by just coaching more like just doing so oftentimes people are saying oh I don't feel confident but confidence doesn't come by thinking it comes by doing so the more I coached people and then the more I saw people getting results and I got feedback on how working with me helped then that made me then feel confident in my abilities so I think it's important to to do the opposite to what you think. So, because oftentimes people shy away, oh, I don't think I can do that. Oh, I'm just not going to do it. But if you do that every time, you're never going to do it. So, you kind of have to push yourself. Um, and the more and more that happens, the more you start to feel comfortable in that new kind of role or new way of doing things. As I say, was that a leap? <laughs> it wasn't. I have, um, I have like, <laughs> I have some plans on my wall and I was like, this is a really good idea. I should put post-its everywhere. And then now they're just falling off one by one. So it didn't really work as I thought. <laughs> so for our listeners, it's just, we saw something floating down next to Janine. <laughs> and it was green as well. That's why you're like, is it a flag? <laughs> She's always sat by a window, but no, it's not post-it. <laughs> um, that's the problem with posters. They don't necessarily like being stuck to things, despite that being their sole purpose in life. Exactly. So I feel like now I need to get sellotape to like stick it down, which is <laughs> what's the point of using a post-it. <laughs> exactly. As you were going through, and as you say, it's, it's really, it can be so difficult to, to take those steps outside of your comfort zone and to start believing in yourself and believing that you've got a value. And, and did you find, were you consciously trying to to head towards coaching people other than people just like you or was that something that evolved so so you know that you you're happy coaching lawyers who have gone through motherhood worrying about returning to a career but was it a conscious decision to start heading towards so, those other people as well yeah, I think I, I ended up working with a few people who um, who weren't lawyers. So one lady that I met at an event and she needed some support and she was an accountant. Um, and I worked with her on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and then I worked with a group of women in a group program and not all of them were lawyers. And then I just realized that actually the issues that people are facing are quite similar um, as professional women who have worked really hard. There's, there's, there's these themes these common themes and so when I recognize that actually 
what I'm talking to people about isn't just particular to lawyers, then I'm like, why can't I help other people? And I like the variety in that. And so I think it came that way where I was working with the people and then I realised that, yeah, I could, I could coach women beyond just lawyers. Do you find that it's also kind of sparks your creativity to, to help them find their direction? Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting and it's also easier to just stick in the in the mode of coach. So like there's a there's a distinction between coaching and mentoring. And when you have walked the path that your your coachee is is on, it can be easier for you to fall into mentor and start talking about like your experience and what you've done. Um, but when you're not when you have no experience of that and it's a completely different industry, you can't draw on that experience. And so it's easier for you to actually not feel the need to kind of jump in and just give the person the space to kind of explore whatever it is that they have to explore. And so I found that to be the case. um, And I quite like that. So it's helped me with my coaching approach, I think, uh, and just on reflecting on my practice and how I how I'm working with clients. I realised that I find it easier when someone's not been on my path. So yeah. Which is quite funny, isn't it? Completely the opposite of what you initially thought. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting in terms of the journey. And and when you started it up, were you, you know, as starting a new business, as, you know, as we talked about at the beginning, starting a new business, you know, can can have its challenges and can be very much a, a roller coaster ride. Did you find that you experienced, you know, any of those challenges yourself or any challenges that you encountered as you were trying to get, make that move into being a coach? Yeah, Absolutely. There's two parts to it. There's the coaching part. So like understanding how to coach and kind of gaining your skills in the service that you provide. And then there's the business side. And I did not have a clue what I was doing. I was a lawyer who in terms of business development, I just needed to go to networking events. That was that was me ticking the box when I was working in private practice. But then I was like, well, how do I actually build business? So at first I thought, okay, once I get my website out there and I put my number on my website, people are going to call me. How are they going to find you? Why would they? Why would they? But at the time, I didn't know that. So just learning about marketing and um, being strategic and how you actually reach out and find those clients to work with took took some learning. And yeah, there was a lot of kind of like, oh, this isn't working. Why is this not working? So it's a steep, steep learning curve. And then, yeah, it just takes time and process for you to figure out what works, what doesn't work, how to go about it and how to be consistent. Um, and so, yeah, I think for anyone starting out, I would say that building and growing a business is the best personal development tool you can ever have because there's so many moments of like feeling rejected and you have to deal with a lot of your stuff. Stuff comes up that you didn't really know was there before um, because you're putting yourself out there consistently and repeatedly and it's not easy. But when you remember what your mission is and why you're doing it, it can help you to keep moving forward even when it's tough. And it's really difficult sometimes to to not take things personally. Um, I know that for me personally, I was I was actually really proud of myself when I put together a quote for somebody earlier this year, um, and they rejected it. And, and the reason that I, I was was proud was because I didn't take it personally. Um, I knew that I'd given them a quote that was was right for the amount of work that I was going to have to do. I knew it was expensive. I knew there was actually probably, you know, high likelihood that they would reject it, but I accepted all of that and, and I didn't take it as a rejection of me. Yes. Um, and I was, I was actually really kind of like, I'm actually really happy with how I progress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know, why doesn't he like me? <laughs> yes, exactly. In the early days, it is, it's really hard. You do take it personally. You like, I'm putting myself out there and the person saying no and you feel like they're saying no to you and why not and and what is it about me or my the way that I've described it that they don't want and actually a lot of the time it's it's the person it's their, them feeling like they can't show up for themselves or they're not going to do the work um, and they say I can't make the investment or like they're not seeing the value in it so then you need to move on because there's like billions of people in this world so exactly. you need to find the people. And it's also accepting that for some people, it will be because they didn't like you. And, and that's yeah. fine. Because if, you, you know, we all have people that we like and people that we, we dislike or don't get on with. And, and it's, it's trying to get to that point where you can go, yeah, actually, that's fine. We weren't a match. I wasn't the right person for, for them. 
they weren't the right person for me and move on. But but it it's really difficult, especially if you yeah. haven't faced up to it before. Yeah, and if you have tendencies to you know be a people pleaser or someone who likes to be liked, um, that can be difficult to just be like, yeah, they're they're not my person or I'm not their person and. I think it's good though to get to that point because then when you are speaking to people about working with you, it's not from a place of, okay, I just want to work with anybody. It's like, actually, I want to see if you're a good fit for me because I don't work with everybody because I don't work well with, you know, like we're not necessarily going to be a good fit both ways. Um, And then you're able to refer people to others. If you think actually I'm probably not the best person, but I do know someone who would probably be a better fit for you. And that's a different mindset to come at a conversation um with as opposed to like I want you to hire me yes yeah you're moving away from that I need business I need some cash flow I need you know this just to start working to actually I need the right person so yes I want the cash flow I need the business but I want it to be with the right people so that together we're successful yeah because especially well you know definitely in yours and in mine as well you know we're dealing with other people. And, and if you don't have a connection on a certain level, it's, it's not going to work, is it? Exactly. So when you started and you, you've we've talked about how you made some of these transitions, but did you find, you know, did you leave, you know, working as, as a lawyer uh, and start this up and the consulting came up afterwards or, or how did that all evolve? So I decided to leave um, private practice. So I was working within a law firm as a corporate lawyer um, while I was on maternity leave with my son. So I tried to negotiate working on a three day a week basis. And I knew that that wouldn't be possible because the practice area that I was in um, as a transactional lawyer, it would be really difficult to work three days a week. If you're the only associate on a deal, um, it's really hard when everything kicks off. I knew that that would be difficult, but then I also knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work three days a week and be with my son two days. So I made the choice to leave. And then shortly after that, one of the partners that I was working with contacted me and said, one of my previous clients was looking for some support on a part-time basis. They needed a, a, a lawyer to come and work for them in-house for the first time and I should speak to them. So I went into the conversation with them saying, this is what I want and this is what I'm willing to do. And then they agreed to what I had asked and then I ended up working in-house three days a week and I had two days at home with my son. Um, and so I did that for a couple of years and then more recently there were some changes in terms of location um, and I went from having a 40 minute commute to a a sometimes two hour commute and that wasn't working for me anymore. So I had to then adjust and look at things and say, well, actually my business is, is, is growing and um, more opportunities are coming there. So it would be great to have more flexibility. And I know I don't want to travel to London. So consulting was just a great next step because I have the flexibility to work um, remotely and I can move my calendar around to accommodate like speaking engagements that I've been doing and workshops on a corporate on the corporate side. And so, yeah, it's kind of just evolved. And at each stage, it's been me saying, well, what needs to happen for my in terms of how I want life to look? And then from there, navigating it. And have you had um, or did you find it hard to stand up for what you wanted? So, you know, were there any questions in your mind? around you know here's what I know I want I'm actually pretty sure I'm not going to get it but I'm still standing up for this is what I want yeah it actually it was I wouldn't say it wasn't a challenge because it's always difficult to make a change but like I very much subscribe to um what Stephen Covey says in his book the habits of um the seven habits of highly successful people where he says one of them is that you start with the end in mind And so for me, I started with the end in mind. I'm saying, right, I'm here now. I have a son. It's really important to me in his early years that I'm with him at least a few days a week in the week. And so that's what I need. So I need to work backwards from that. If that's what I need, what do I need to do from a work perspective to get there? So once I I had that in my mind that this is really important to me, then everything else was like, well, if I have to leave to get that, then I'm just going to have to leave and I'm going to figure it out. And so that's what happened. So I think once you decide what you want and why you want it and you know your why, then it's easier to make those types of decisions. With your clients, do you find that they 
they're able to to make those decisions as well? Or is that part of what you're working through with them that you're getting to getting to the point where they understand what their why is and what they want so they can yes. make the appropriate decision? Yeah. So I help them to work through that because oftentimes people that come to me say that, you know, they feel stuck. They know that they don't want to, they either don't want to be doing what they want what they're doing now they want to do something different but they don't know what that would look like or how they go about it or they're not sure how to navigate those conversations to ask for that flexibility that they want and so I I kind of created my own framework which I call the career fulfillment framework Mm -hmm. and it takes people through four four phases and the first who the first two phases are your um your vision and your values so what is the vision so not let's not think about the specific, like what role or job do you want to be doing? What do you want life to look like? So like in your ideal day or your ideal week, what are you doing? Who are you spending time with? How do you feel? What's your environment? Like let's paint that picture. And then from there, we can figure out what's really important to you. And when you know what that is, then you can see like that can act as your filter. And then you can see what types of roles or what types of opportunities will allow you to reach that vision. And so that's kind of what we work through initially before we then work on the strategy side of things. Okay. Yeah. And that, that sounds very practical because if we don't know where you're going, then you've really the chance Around of getting circle. there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and how do you balance? So you're now doing, you know, you're coaching and you've got the business side as well as the actual coaching itself. You've mentioned that you're doing speaking. You've got um, a podcast of your own as well. You've got a son. You're doing consulting, uh, you know, as a lawyer. How do you keep your life heading to, to what you want it to be like? Yeah, it's actually crazy. Like when you start listening out, listing it out, I'm like, oh, and I also have a daughter as well. So I have a father and a daughter. <laughs> um, uh, so I think for me, it's always a moving, it's always like a piece of the puzzle that I'm moving. What is fixed is that I have two days a week with the children. Um, and then in those other three days, I then have to juggle things around. So sometimes I'll have like um, coaching, individual coaching client calls in the daytime. Um, and that means I'm working on a contract in, the, in an evening. And But what is good is that I can say from a legal consulting point of view, whether or not I'm taking on new clients or new projects right now. So I've just had kind of over the last month, lots of speaking things have come up. So then I haven't taken on as much in terms of my um, legal clients. So I, I kind of have to look ahead and say what's coming down the pipeline and adjust accordingly. And then on a week to week and day to day basis, I kind of, I have, everything needs to be on the calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. And I use my Google calendar and I categorize everything with different colors. And so I go in and first I block off the most important thing. So I block off the family time. Um, I block off like time that I, I know needs to be on the calendar. And then after that, I then fill in the other things. So I say, okay, when am I actually going to work on my, um, my legal client work when's that going to happen and I put it in the calendar so that's my block for that when am I having calls with my coaching clients when am I doing marketing when am I so literally it's really funny because when I first started doing this I sent um my mom came to visit and I said oh look what I've done I've just color coded my whole calendar she's like oh my goodness I wouldn't want to live your life like (laughs) where's the white space there's no white space and I was like, you're so right. Next week, I need to make more white space. And so I need to even schedule the white space. But so yeah, it is crazy. But it, it, it just takes like planning and moving things around and always assessing like what's working, what's not working. I'm taking on too much. My husband's often saying to me, you know, you think you're superwoman, there's just too much going on. And so I then have to adjust and be like, yeah, you're right, I need to take some stuff off or say no, say no to some things, or say not right now to some things. Um, I have my podcast and my aim is to get an episode out every week. That doesn't always happen because sometimes I just physically can't make it happen. And that's okay. Um, so it's also, you know, giving yourself grace as well. It is. And that's, that's so important. I did, um, for my podcast, I did a special uh, sort of a week of a podcast going out every day at the beginning of this year to support Microbiz Matters. And in my mind, the way it was going to work is that I would get the podcast done 
the day before. So I would have recorded it, get it done the day before, so it would go out the next day. And I had to accept in the end, it was going to go out every day, even if it was 11.59 that night. Right. But the, the, it just because of the, the pressure and, and all of the stuff that was on me, that it just wasn't practical. And, and I had to, as you say, I had to go to myself, actually, that's okay. Yeah. It, it's, it's, not, it's not a fail. It's nothing else. It's just this is reality. So, so as you say, accepting that some things may or may not go quite as you would have liked is, is really important, isn't it? Definitely. And yeah, things, there's always curveballs. Like, you know, you make plans. I, I had, I remember once I was interviewing someone for the podcast and it was someone I really wanted to interview. And I, we tried to schedule the call so many times. And um, on the day of, both of my children were sick. And I was like, this is, and my husband was away. I was like, this is not happening. Like, I need to do this interview. So I ended up doing the interview and I had my daughter like lying on me. And you can hear her in the background saying, water, water. And I had to like, I was on the interview, I had to reach across the room to get the water to give to her. And I was like, this is just crazy. <laughs> but we made it happen. We made it work. So. <laughs> And that's great as well, because sometimes it doesn't just take sort of both of you willing to go. It's not perfect, but we're going to give it a go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, it's sometimes all a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do to, you know, so you've blocked out the family time, you've blocked out your white space now as well. And what do you do to actually relax and, and enjoy? Because I would imagine, possibly incorrectly, that some of that family time isn't downtime that, that it is actually I've got to cook dinner or I've got to get the kids to school or whatever it is yeah so how are you getting some of that you know let's relax and and look after yourself whether it's you what you and your husband you and the yeah. kids yeah um yeah a lot of our family time is busy 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 um we do have Saturdays is a day where we don't do anything so it's our family day together um we go to church on that day and then we just we we relax as a family um and so that's good for us because we know that that's that's time that's set aside but in terms of me I'm I'm getting better at this in terms of making sure that I have time to just have time for me but I've started to go out two days a week in the morning we wake up and then I say to my husband okay I'm gonna go for a run so then I'll just go out and go for a run sometimes I don't run I just walk like yesterday I went and I was feeling really anxious there was a lot going on and so I just went and sat by the lake near where we live and just had some time to just reflect and just like listen to music and and have some downtime so I do that if I if I am feeling like I just need some time to process I like to do adult coloring if I get too yeah. stressed, I'm like, where's my coloring book? I need my coloring book. Um, and then I'll sit and do that, which is really relaxing. Um, and then the other thing is I like to play netball. So I will sometimes go and, and get involved in playing netball matches. So for me, exercise is a way that I de-stress. And yeah, I think more and more as life's got more busy, finding time to connect with friends is always, always a challenge because everybody's calendars are busy. Um, but that's something that I like to do as well, like just having time with, with my, my girls and just being able to relax and unwind. So it's just making sure that you've got the time for that. Yeah. Do whatever it is that on that particular day is what you need. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes it gets to the point where I'm like, actually, yeah, I need to just have some time off because I think the challenge for me is I really enjoy my work. So when I'm, when I'm doing anything related to building my business or coaching clients it doesn't feel like work to me it's I really enjoy it but then that means that I'm always working um and so I have to be more disciplined with that and say actually you do need some time where you're just not doing anything you're just you have time to just be um and so yes it is a challenge it's a work in progress but I have acknowledged it <laughs> so that's the first step <laughs> It's the first step, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yes. And as you say, sometime, you know, I remember a month or so ago, I'd gone, I'd gone for a walk with the dog, actually. And I sat down on this bench and it started to rain. And it was just, it was really lovely. So I'm sitting there, the rain's starting to fall. I'm protected underneath these trees. And I was just enjoying, reflecting, listening to the rain, watching the dog run around because he doesn't care if he gets wet. And I realized how valuable that time was to, to just 
essentially be doing nothing except watching the world around me, which was a pretty green, wet world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's really important. In society now, we're always so busy and always moving from one thing to the next and we're so connected. So there's always something to be doing with our hands, like looking at our phones or checking something. And I think it's, it's, we're losing that element of just appreciating what's there and, and taking it all in. Yeah, just being. And just being. Yeah. And, and, and there's also this drive, or, or it's not a drive, it, it's like there's a need that if I'm here, I've got to take a picture of it. I've got to, you know, I've got to tell somebody. Yeah. As as, you know, actually, I'm just here. And there was somebody, I, I can't remember who it was, but fairly recently, somebody said that they, they told their audience that if they wanted to video them, that was fine. But could they please hold their camera over to the side so that they were still actually there watching it themselves, enjoying it while they were videoing it rather than looking at the screen. Yeah. And I thought that was great because, because I think so often we're, we're stuck behind the screen and I, I remember somebody once she she was so excited about this woman who was about to come on to um, we were at um, a riding event and she was so excited um, it was I think Charlotte Dujardin who was coming on and she almost missed it because she was trying so hard to get the camera in the right place and, and I was just yeah. like, put the camera away and just watch it <laughs> yeah because you still have the memories like exactly. you'll recall it in your brain as, as if it was a photograph so <laughs> so, so Janine if you were to give somebody some advice if they were thinking of starting their own business or you know they're coming back as you've said you know in terms of, of, of the people you work with they're, they're looking at how they progress with their career in what direction? You know, what advice would you give them? What should they start thinking about to, to find their vision? Yeah, um, I think it is important to think bigger. So like, like I was saying earlier about painting the picture of the type of um, lifestyle that you want and the way that, that you want to live, I think it's also good to kind of do an audit of, of yourself and your skills of what you enjoy, what you like, what you're passionate about what what kind of lights you up because that changes over time mm -hmm. um and so so that you can make sure that you're building something or you're going into something that's well aligned with you as a person and what you enjoy to do what you're good at I'm very much a proponent of leveraging your strengths and focusing on what you're good at to make make it that you're great at that thing as opposed to focusing on what you're not good at and trying to get get better at it so I think if you're at a crossroads and you're trying to figure out what's next doing an audit of yourself and where you're at is really important and then thinking in an ideal world if there were no barriers if there were no limitations what would I like to create or what would I like to do or how would I like to live and then you can work backwards from there and then map out well how would I get as close to that as possible or how would I move towards that ideal and are there any expectations that that people should manage themselves about either how close they can actually get to that or how long it might take them to get there? Or, or is it just, uh, you know, if I build it, they will come? It's definitely not if I build it, they will come. Um, I think it is recognizing that as soon as you decide that you're going to do something, you're going to then start noticing other people that are doing it, either something similar or who are, you know, other people in business um, and what I always say is that you shouldn't compare your chapter one with someone else's chapter 20 because you do not know all that they had to go through to get to that point so if you're at a starting point and you're saying oh my gosh they're there how am I ever going to get there or I don't compare they've been through a journey um, to get there and you're definitely about to go on the journey so I, I would say the timing is never going to be your timing um, so it's all about knowing what the goal is and then taking one step after another step after another step and then I, I would also say along the way try not to have your blinkers on because there might be things that come up that take you on a slightly different path to what you initially had anticipated but you're allowing yourself the space to learn along the journey and say actually it might be this. So this is my vision. But as I'm moving and as I'm learning and as I'm getting more insight, I'm realizing that I might want to adjust that vision. And that's okay. Because sometimes people become a slave to the vision. Like, okay, well, that's what I set out to do. So I have to do it. And 
that that doesn't have to be the case that was I, I kind of experienced that as going into being a lawyer I decided that's what I wanted to do really young and then I just went on that path and was like whatever I have to do to get there I just want to be a lawyer I want to be a lawyer and I wasn't paying attention to me and what's important to me as a person and what I really enjoy doing and that's why I got to the point where I was qualified I was working as a lawyer but I wasn't feeling fulfilled I felt like something was missing because I'm a people person and I really like helping people on a personal level and I thought just being a lawyer helping people with their contracts was going to do it but it didn't but I was so focused and had such tunnel vision that I didn't even recognize that that was a really important part of career fulfillment for me um so yeah I would say you're building as you go so it's not build it and they will come build as you go get the insight speak to the people that you want to that you want to be working with to find out you know what they actually need and then build something where you're serving them in the way that they need you to serve them not the way that you think they need you to serve them <laughs> yeah it's really annoying when they don't want to be served the way you want to serve them exactly it's like <laughs> but this makes so much sense like why would you not just want this it's brilliant and other people are like yeah i don't want that <laughs> 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 that, that's really great advice, Janine. Thank you very much. Um, are there any, uh, you know, sort of last words that you'd like to leave people thinking about? Yeah, just that we have. So I, I was preparing for a talk recently and I came across a stat, which I thought was, wow, that's amazing. So the average person spends 90,000 hours at work over their lifetime. 90,000 hours. That's a lot of time. So if you think about that, what do you want to be spending your time doing? So if you're in a place where you're spending time and every day you go to work and you're like, this isn't, this isn't it. I don't know what, I don't, I don't enjoy what you're doing. Do you want to spend thousands and thousands of hours doing that? Or is it better for you to draw a line in the sand and say, okay, right now I'm going to start to try and figure out what it is I want to be spending my time doing. So I would just say, I think life's too short to be doing work that you don't enjoy. So figure out what it is that you could and should be doing. That is absolutely fantastic advice. And as you say, that's an astounding number, 90,000 hours. Yeah, it's a lot of time, isn't it? It is. It's scary, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is really wonderful, Janine. Thank you very much. And for anybody who wants to get in touch with Janine, I will post her her details up onto, well, into the show notes so you'll be able to get them and can reach out to her. Uh, whenever whenever you like because you've got just trying to think you've got something starting up in September yes I do so I have um, a membership program um, that I run and it's uh, kind of a group coaching experience um, and we're relaunching it in September and it's really for the woman who says I want to create my own flexibility so I can't find it in corporate and I want to either start freelancing or start my own business um, and the program is all about guiding you through that whole process so we start off with the mindset that we talked about and then we go into the practicality so that's kicking off in September which I'm really excited about um, so yeah it's gonna be fun excellent well I will make sure there's details up there for that as well and uh, thank you very much for joining me today thank you so much for having me it's been awesome I really appreciate it Deborah you've been listening to Deborah Levitt on Bridging Gaps the business podcast.